or we can play around um, with the parameters of, of these objects and, for example, make them terrible so we can just rip objects apart. And the model is not only agnostic to whether it is a hand or a physical object, so we can uh, uh, use this wooden block to anchor the springy claws down so it actually stays in place when the, when the users let go. And finally, um, we can use really any kind of object that is infrared reflective, such as this uh, red envelope, to, to rake multiple objects and, and move them all at the same time. All right, um, so I, I won't go into much more detail about this because I know that there's a lot of technical detail and um, I just want to um, wrap up this first part of the, uh, of the presentation today. So you've seen a new technique um, that brings physics to the surface while preserving much of the fidelity of, of manual dexterity and the fidelity of input that our, our hands allow us. Um, and there's, there's obviously like many optimizations and problems with this approach but I want to highlight one aspect that we're going to talk about in more detail uh, further down the line. And this is uh, the, the mismatch of input and output. So we're still sensing 2D because it's a flat surface that we're interacting with, which can feel as if you're, um, you're poking objects protected by a, by a thin layer of transparent film and you're trying to, to grasp them really, but it's not possible because the sensed, sensed input is only 2D. And also, um, the projection is obviously 2D, so we can, we can only project onto one display and not, you know, like 3D objects in space. Um, so the next part of this presentation, I want to talk about a new surface technology that addresses some of these limitations. Um, a tabletop technology that supports imaging and projection beyond the display. Um, so let's recall, um, and I talked about this earlier, how surface input is actually sensed. So this schematic approach um, shows a very typical tabletop approach. So underneath the projection screen, um, there is an infrared, uh, there's a camera uh, with an infrared pass filter and a projector and some sort of uh, infrared illumination scheme. Um, and if the diffuser up top is essential for both sensing and projection but it limits what the camera can see beyond the display, obviously. So it's a blessing and it's a, it's a curse at the same time. Um, and this is again raw sensor data of such a device. And we can see that only objects that are actually in, in contact with the surface are visible to the camera and the entire background is clipped away. And this, um, as I said, is, is a blessing in one sense because it makes it easier to detect touch events and discriminate them from, from objects that are just on top of the table. Um, and it also enables us to project an Im image because the diffuser, you know, the diffuser scatters light. Um, but that um, makes it impossible to see through the diffuser and to project through the diffuser. Um, but in recent years, there is like an emerging, an emerging class of, of display materials, and in particular, I want to highlight one that's an electronically switchable diffuser. So on the right hand side, on the right hand side, you see um, a typical image from a camera underneath a static diffuser. But when you apply a voltage to this particular material, it actually changes its state from diffuse to clear and all of a sudden you can see the user's hand and can even see the, the floor underneath so we can all of a sudden image through the display um, and, and detect objects at much, much further distances. Um, and now if we go back and forth we can, uh, we can see that we can potentially, if we do this fast enough, actually project an image onto the screen and half of the time look through the display. Um, what we get then is something like this. So in this video we're switching slowly so that you can actually see it. But we get the same... This is very, very dark. Um, but we get the same kind of input that, we, that we're used to from normal tabletops. But once we switch the diffuser into its clear state, we can actually see objects um, very clearly and also further away from the display. Um, 
And then uh, let's have a look at the projection side of things. So we've seen that this change is sensing, but it also does some remarkable things to what we can do with images. So um, this is again, um, if you want so a regular rear projected screen, we're seeing a full size image um, on the screen and nothing above. Um, but as we switch the diffuser into its clear state, we see nothing on the main screen, but there's just a regular sheet of paper that reveals an image that's otherwise not visible. And now, if we start switching the diffuser really, really quickly, we can see two different images. And they're both coming from underneath the table, so there's no projector on top. Um, and there's only, there's only one self-contained setup. 